for your next trip, I do not want you to make these packing mistakes. Today, I will teach you how to lessen those mistakes that you make if this is your first time in an airplane or if you have not flown since the Transportation Security Administration was even instituted. The packing mistakes I'm going to talk about are overpacked suitcases that cause more weight and then you have to pay more money for them, not knowing how to go through airport security based on what you have packed. And if you're a passenger who keeps making these same packing mistakes over and over, I am here to help. My goal for this video is to show you what you absolutely do need so that you pack the fewest amount of things and you have confidence going through airport security and packing that suitcase. But first, you have to pack it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm a Houston Pilot wife sharing tips to help you travel the globe without a worry in the world. And I'm going to teach you how to not make packing mistakes. <laughs> Click the bell beside subscribe and you will never miss a free travel tip video from me. One packing mistake you can avoid is to choose the correct size luggage. Most people are traveling with carry-on suitcases now and when you buy that ticket, again one day, you will need to research your airline and luggage requirements. A common mistake that especially avid travelers make is we do not make packing lists anymore. I want you to make a packing list either mentally or physically by writing down on a piece of paper what you need. One of the ways I want you to organize your packing list is to think of your liquids bag. Then you can make your packing list for what other things you need. But first, to make that packing list, I want you to check the weather for your destination while you're going to be there so that you know what kind of shoes you will need based on that weather. You might wanna pack leather type shoes that can get wet if it's a rainy day. As a former teacher, visuals help you remember things and so I think this will help you pack more efficiently. A common mistake people make when packing for airline travel is they pack an outfit for every day of the week. I have two rules of thumbs for you. One is to only pack in the winter one other pair of jeans or pants, and then you also are wearing that airplane outfit pair of jeans. And then in the summer, I want you to only pack two other shorts. Then what you're going to do for your packing list is you're gonna make sure every top matches with every one of those bottom pieces. If only one shirt matches with one of those pants, unless it's a super dressy meal, then take it out and choose another shirt that would go with both of them. I know you have plenty of shirts in your closet. Another packing mistake is that people pack shoes for every outfit. You do not need them. My travel tip for packing shoes is to pack no more than two other pairs of shoes than the ones you are wearing on the airplane. Because you already checked the weather, you know that you are gonna have two other pairs of shoes in your suitcase, and you're gonna make the pants or the jeans or the shorts go with those two shoes or the shoes that you're wearing. Some people, even my sister-in-law, just a few years ago packed an almost empty bottle of shampoo or lotion. And in your liquids bag, the container has to be 3.4 ounces or less. So even if you only have one ounce of liquid, it's not allowed through regular airport security. When you travel through airport security, they want to be able to screen things easily. So they ask that you pull out that liquids bag full of containers that are 3.4 ounces or less. The TSA.gov website is fantastic for giving you all the information you need. At the very top right corner, there's a what can I bring section and you can type in what you are wondering about. You can even download the free My TSA app and on it you can easily ask them if your persnickety item is allowed through airport security. I have even called them and they've answered and they will answer you on your message within a business day. On the TSA website, if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see their top frequently asked questions and that's those are the top questions that I get as well. So help yourself before you even start to pack. I know some of you, like myself, get nervous going through airport security because you think you're going to make a mistake. Well, one mistake that those people make is by talking too much to the, the TSA officers. That holds up all the people who are in line before, behind you because you stop untying your shoes or you don't pick up your suitcase to keep the line moving because you're talking to the officer, just trying to be nice or um, nervous. And do not make jokes that are about the airplane. What am I gonna do with that? Make it crash or something like that because you won't be flying that day <laughs> or ever. 
one way to avoid having a space issue when you pack is to wear your heaviest shoes on the airplane and that way the other two pairs of shoes will fit fine in your suitcase one mistake that a subscriber actually pointed out to me is that for avid travelers we think oh i've got to pack my shoes together in the suitcase or in a shoe bag together but you don't have to you can squeeze one shoe if you have space in between two pouches or in between some clothes for packing makeup i have an entire video with tips about that one mistake women make is packing their makeup in one of those hard shell makeup cases for travel you can divide that makeup into pouches and pack them in different areas of your suitcase or your personal item bag some people make the mistake of packing too little in their uh, personal item bag that they're allowed for free. In this weekender bag, I can fit three Costco sized paper towel rolls. So imagine how many outfits I can fit in there. One mistake I also see in airport security is the passengers who wait until the last second to then untie their shoes. It just holds up the line. You need to, when there are like five people in front of you, untie your shoes or unzip your boots so that they're ready to go when it's your turn to put your travel essentials inside the gray bin. When you pack at home, not in the airport, have your ID easily accessible as well as your ticket or the barcode that you're gonna need to show airport security. And then when you get through showing that first officer your ID and your ticket, you need to have a pocket that's readily available, unzipped for you to stick that stuff in so that you can carry on through the security line. Rule, I mean, there have been a lot of rule changes. So can we have some grace for making mistakes? Yes. <laughs> if you have not traveled during the pandemic, one of the new rules that came out is that you are now allowed in your carry-on bags, a bottle of hand sanitizer that is up to 12 ounces okay and it does not have to fit in your liquids bag but the tiny print or the rest of the rule is that it does need to be pulled out of your carry-on bags and put in the gray bin for extra screening so when that gray bin goes through airport security it's going to have the liquids bag but then somewhere else in the gray bin or in one of the gray bins you're going to have that bottle of hand sanitizer that's up to 12 ounces. Hers was six ounces and it just takes extra time. And then the officers rifle through your bags and mess up all your organized packing that you have uh, practiced. One mistake that I see lots of passengers making is choosing hard shell or hard sided luggage. I will always choose soft-sided luggage for two reasons. Soft-sided luggage can expand and it can smush down if you need to fit it in the overhead bins. If you want to find a packing method for you that helps you fit more in your carry-on suitcase, I have a video that I just released last week that shows you how to pack in all different methods. I test them all for you. My favorite packing method is with compression cubes because I can fit more in and the compression cubes compress the air in between my clothes, but that can lead to another common mistake if you have to worry about this, and that is the weight of your suitcase. And you do not have to go buy one of those luggage weigher scale things. Just stand on the scales by yourself and then stand on the scales while holding your suitcase. A simple mistake that I passengers making is packing in a bag that you can only wear over your shoulder. My travel tip is to pack in one of those bags that has a little slip or a pocket that's going to go over the arms of your suitcase and that way you can be hands-free. One can hold your phone and one can hold your coffee now that the coffee shops are open again. Your airplane can be parked almost a mile away from airport security. And also think about when you're packing, choose a weekender or a personal item bag that actually does zip for when you are taking off or if you have turbulence. I have taken a snap bag one time and that was to the beach because I hardly had anything in my bag and I only had my items in pouches. You also do not have to pack a neck pillow. I used mine once in a 10 hour flight. You just don't wanna buy a neck pillow that has little support. Mine is like wearing a neck brace. <laughs> I mean, your head barely moves, but which worked for me, but I've only used it on one flight. They're bulky to pack also. And I will use it again, but just don't buy the no support ones. There's also a mistake you might make, and I have an alternative for it. Instead of packing a blanket for just the airplane, I want you to think of packing or wearing a heavy cardigan or a heavy hoodie, like sweatshirt jacket. Then when you do get warm inside the airplane, you can roll it up and uh, pack it inside that weekender bag or your 
personal item bag or you can fold it and just lay it on top of that bag that's under the seat in front of you. A blanket can only be used once. It's a unitasker. If you have a cardigan or a hoodie, those can be worn a couple of times during your vacation if you get cold in a restaurant or a movie theater or a museum one day. There's a dangerous mistake that a lot of people can make now that if you have not flown in a while, when the flight attendants say, if you drop your phone, please call a flight attendant to come get it for you. And that is because of the batteries in your phone. They can catch fire or, um, yes, combust, if, especially in the first class seats. If those slide over the phone, they can catch fire. Now, flight attendants and airplanes, they're equipped with these bags that if you do have a battery or your phone gets completely demolished, they will put it in that bag in case it catches fire and it just extinguishes the fire if there is any. You do not need to pack a hair dryer, just use the one that the hotel has. Another mistake you might make is by taking too much shampoo that you don't really need. You can use like the hotel shampoo one or two days throughout your trip and then only pack enough for the days that you really will have to use your shampoo. I have dry scalp so I have to use my shampoo but I just thought you know I can make it a day by using just the hotel shampoo. If you are really nervous about going through the Transportation Security Administration line I have a video that walks you step by step and tells you what you need to take out and when that I will link in the cards and in the description box for you. If you click on the upside down triangle or show more you can see all of my links that I have for you. I just thought of one other mistake that a lot of packing beginners make and that is that you don't realize all the empty pockets of space that you have once you've packed your clothes in your suitcase. You can use the cavern of space in between your handles that go down into your suitcase. You can use the corners of your suitcase. You can use that outer pocket of your carry-on bag and you can use that inside mesh pocket that is inside the outer flap of your suitcase. Use it all. Make things fit in those little bitty pockets of space. All right, send me all your packing questions or ideas that you have after watching this video. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate you watching and joining us. <laughs> and if you're a passenger, why is there so much fur?